And DevX was finally becoming really a big thing. And if it was not for DevX and Roblox in general, I would not have been able to afford life-saving medication one particular harsh winter on my lungs. And if it wasn't for Roblox, I'd probably be six feet under right now. Failure to me is interesting. It can be seen as something negative and something that holds you back or a positive thing that lifts you up to the next level. In my story, everything I've ever done or accomplished has not been without a challenge. And I think it's the same with Roblox developers. They didn't get to the point where they're having millions or even billions of players on their game without a little bit of a challenge. In this podcast, we aim to highlight and focus on those challenges and see how those developers turn it around to the point where it's lifting them up and bringing them to the next level. Tell us about who you guys are. We can go with Enyo first. Uh, who are you? What do you do? Well, uh, it started probably around in 2011. Uh, it was back when uh, Roblox Titanic, the original version made by Amazeman, I contacted him. It's like, hey, I made this Titanic. Want to try and use it? And uh, from there, basically, we're our, here where we are today. Well, I joined Roblox in 2008. I was 13 at the time. I was like getting right into development right when I started. And me and my brother, we both started at the same time. I was like more into building at the time. And then I figured out that I could script. So I, I started scripting stuff and I wanted to make these games. Within the first year, I, I made the first version of Roblox Titanic. <laughs> Why the Titanic, though, of all things? Oh, well, yeah, I missed that part of the story. I was really, <laughs> really into, the sto- into the story of the Titanic when I was very young. So was Taylor. A bit of an obsession that never will go away, unfortunately. It's been an obsession for both of us. It kind of just happened to some people. So I, I actually drew Titanic pictures in elementary school. And so I was that weird kid that, that would do that. So I, I probably have a few of them still, but... Yeah, I would draw them. I would draw them sinking. I would draw them like uh, not sinking. I would just draw them during like what was called like story time. I visited a Titanic museum in Branson, Missouri. So what I ended up doing was I came home after that, and I had previously had this this car racing game, and I took one of the cars and I looked up the average length of a car, and I put that many cars up to equal the amount of feet that Titanic was, 882 and a half. And it ended up being very, very overscale because I was building the cars overscale. So the, my entire measurement system was off by like almost one and a half to two times as big. So the original classic Titanic is like hugely overscale. And so uh, when Taylor was modeling the new Titanic, we put it back to a regular scale. How did you get to the point where you're having millions and millions of players on? Um, and like right now you got you know, a few thousand concurrent players. How did you guys get to the point where this is like as popular as it is? My theory is we developed a team of highly specialized people. I program Taylor 3D models. We have um, Mr. Titanic 44, and he does the interior modeling of Titanic. And then we have an entire different team for the Britannic so that we're not cutting into the other game's time. So we all have like, these talented developers working together to make these to make these games that form a community of people who love ships and 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 who love role playing. So these people go into the game and they can make new friends and then they can they can talk about their favorite ships. We have a Discord server and we have specific channels in there where people can just talk about any type of ship they want. And so they build these community they build these communities within our games that we have helped uh, we've helped form them just by having this place to go online where you can talk about ships and whatever else that goes with that. What were some of the the challenges you guys faced? Because you talked about lag and the amount of parts and all that. What were some challenges you guys faced as developers, as creators, putting this game together? Well, I would have to say the limitations of the Roblox engine itself. Well, specifically as 
The big battle with lag, we kept trying to pinpoint what exactly was causing all the lag, and then we finally found the biggest contributor of lag was actually uh, texture memory usage. And if you play 2.0, you can see there is tons upon tons of textures, which uh, really did not help our case performance-wise. For the last year, we've been uh, re-uploading textures at a smaller resolution, and we have two different ships in the game. You can either have the standard detail or the high detail, and the high detail one is well worth it if you can run it. That's the one with the 3D, uh, the 3D pop out in the grand staircase. It's just so much more detail. It's incredible, and it really shows Mr. Titanic at, at his best. However, we also have to deal with over half of our audience is mobile players, and and we would uh, get our ratings wrecked if if they couldn't play it. So we have to kind of just we upload those textures, make them very very uh, less resolution. And so what we've been doing is we have this this high detail ship that has a gig in textures. And then we have the standard detail ship, which is about maybe 30, 40% of that. Especially in like this weird time that's going on now, uh, where you're pretty much forced to be at home. Is that affecting your productivity and you know, your motivation and how you continue? Well, motivation for me is been wavering, been kind of coming in waves, especially the whole worrying about the things at large going on and those who are close to me who may can potentially pass from this disease if they come into contact in with it. It has been a bit stressful and has affected my motivation and uh, focus recently. Trying to get my mind into happy thoughts, just try to focus on what I do because realize that this line of work, Roblox, is basically the only reason I'm still alive in a nutshell. <laughs> really? Why? Tell me more about that. Well, see, I actually uh, suffer from uh, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or disorder. And mainly because I grew up all my life in a very heavy, smoky environment. And the railroad job I do now, quick reminder is I work for a class three, a short line tourist line railroad. It's not like the one that pays much. Those are class ones like the Union Pacific, where you see hauling freight going by at high speed. I was when I started out, I was paid ten dollars an hour and I would be working very long hours. And sometimes, and during the winter time, my lungs were the most effective. I could not literally afford some of the medication I needed to save my life. However, this was at the time when, I think I believe, uh, 1.0, the original Titanic model before 2.0 model, which we're talking about, came out. And DevX was finally becoming really a big thing. And if it was not for DevX and Roblox in general, I would not have been able to afford life-saving medication one particular harsh winter on my lungs. And if it wasn't for Roblox, I'd probably be six feet under right now. One big, one big story, um, I think is a year or two after the winter he's talking about, uh, he told me he had bronchitis and obviously I know these, I know that his grandma smokes and, and that, that would not be good. So I, I had to invite him over to my place. Um, what is it like 800 miles away? Yeah, I think it's 810. I should bring it up on Google maps. I'm going to do that. It's like 800 speak. miles away. And, and Taylor, he, he beelines the to Tucson, where where I where we both live now, and yeah. and uh, it was like he, he texted me at like 9 p.m. and then he gets here around like 9 a.m. and I'm like, what? You you were up all night? I, I just was, drove nonstop all the way. You actually <laughs> drove to him. Yeah, that's this is, uh, this is over two years ago now. So then that spring we started the 2.0 Titanic model, and then that really really accelerated the growth of, of virtual valley games here with our, with our games how would you guys define your your relationship as a team because obviously if you're willing to drive that far and you're willing to offer up your place for him there's got to be some sort of you know connection between you guys that's more so than a team. sorry i don't mean to interrupt that's all good i would say basically I'd never had any brothers, but Grayson, uh, Amazeman, is basically the true blood brother to me, if you know what I'm trying to get at. That came to Taylor. He's, the, he's my third brother now. I have two other blood Dude, younger brothers. I, can count, I swear. <laughs> what advice would you have uh, for someone to keep their spirits up and to stay in a good mental state? You got to make the game that interests you because. It's not a given that you're ever going to get a billion visits. So if you can just get a game that makes you the amount of money that makes you happy, then that's much more valuable than 
than longing over trying to get a billion visits in a year or whatever, whatever those lofty goals are. Just like, make sure you're happy first. To touch off of what Grace and uh, May said, uh, make the game you want to play. Never lose touch of what's fun for you and keep persevering. Your first game doesn't exactly do well. Keep trying, make another one or improve on the first one and just don't give up. It'll be a rough road at times, but if you manage, just keep persevering and you'll end up somewhere good in the end. I really want to talk about a really last, last thing. How does it feel to have your own Roblox toy? You go into Target and all that, and you can find your character or a character for your game. How does that feel? And how did you get to that point? How did you become a Roblox toy? Uh, I just kept a... Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I really don't know, honestly. <laughs> Do you have your Roblox toy with you? Uh, it's at Grayson's place over there because of the whole bit of this pandemic hit. Okay. Normally we, uh, we, uh, hey, we live together by the corner because since I brought my grandmother down with me to take care of her and during this whole event, I'm currently at my apartment here to take care of her. There it is. I like it. Well, that's all the you know questions and things I wanted to talk about. Do you guys have anything you want to mention? Any advice? Anything uh, to kind of close this out? No, I think all that's either been said has been said. But keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on.